Yo, 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 what's good? Thank you for coming to the House of Barf. I'm Chan Man. And before we get started, I would just like to emphasize that the content that we share on House of Barf is for informational and entertainment purposes only. We are not financial advisors and the information provided should not be considered as professional financial advice. Investing and financial decisions involve risk. And it's crucial to do your own research or consult with a qualified professional before making any financial choices. The opinions expressed on House of Barf are, are of our, our own and do not reflect the views of any organizations that we may be affiliated with. Please remember that past performance is not indicative of future results and the financial landscape can change rapidly. Always conduct thorough due diligence and seek financial advice from a financial advisor tailored to your personal needs and circumstances. By listening to this podcast, you agree that the host and in the future, if we have any guests, are not responsible for any financial decisions you make as a result of the information presented on House of Barf. Now, let's dive into today's episode. Yo, 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 what's good? It's Chipman House of Barf. What's popping? Uh, it's approximately 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 3rd. 2024. Uh, right now, got myself a little breakfast. About to sit down. Got a bev. Got some orange juice. Um, so I still have been interviewing, and I, I know it's kind of like, oh, come on, Chan. Like, how many times do you got to run into a brick wall before you realize that wall is undefeated? I mean, unless you're like a crane or something. Uh, I know. I know. And I'm telling you, watch as soon as I get a job. I could be wrong. Watch I get a sponsor. Like, because that's what happened to me four years ago. I can't even remember the name of the sponsor. Probably a funeral home or something. I can't remember. It was, it was, it was I don't know what it was. Uh, but they, they only gave me like a penny per like 100 views or something. Or something like that. I can't even. It was, nah, it was like 17 cents per like 100 views or something. The thing I really liked about them, though, is I didn't have to reach 100 views. So even if I reached like 25 views, they still gave me like, you know what I'm saying, like 4 cents, 5 cents or something. So I was like, cool, that's cool. Um, so I'm like, man, watch as soon as I get somebody to call me. Like, What's up, Chan? We want you to come in. It's going to be like, hey, we're going to give you a sponsor. And I'm going to be like, okay, cool. How much? And then it's going to be like 25 cents per 900 views. I'm like, dog, that ain't going to pay the bills, man. But I don't know. Um, so with interviewing in the financial market, there's a couple different type of uh, one thing I, I realize I don't think people really get with finances is you're never the guru of like everything. Like you got your. I'm pretty sure even in every sector, it breaks down. So let's take taxes, for example. And I'm not a tax person. Um, I'm pretty sure you have your tax strategist, your tax planner, your tax advisor. I have no idea. Um, uh, I use H&R Block. Uh, they're, they're my tax people for right now. Um, I think they're actually public. I'm, I should write that down because it's tax season. It's probably time to... I need, look, I need a pen. Uh it's probably that'd probably be a good just like thirty day play or something. H and R block, uh, you know, TurboTax. Uh, I think some people use what is it? Quicky, Quicken, mm-hmm. Quicken Links or something. something. I can't remember. I'll find it. But basically, taxes as well as Natty Gas. It's starting to get cold. Uh, people are going to start using their burners if they haven't already. So Natty Gas is probably going to go up as well. Um. But in finances, the shit gets broken down in so many different sectors, so many categories, and then so many subcategories inside those categories. So, well, that's a subcategory. But um, so, uh, you know, finances can be taxes, real estate, um, investments. Um, is there anything else? Just, just financial planning. Um, you know, personal financial planning, small business, you know, so much. And I don't know anything and everything about all any of those taxes. I should, I should apply for a job at the IRS. Could you imagine if you learned all the tax codes 
Oh my gosh. And I'm pretty sure people at the IRS be like, man, I don't even know all the tax codes. Uh, I, I'm dead ass serious when I tell you people in the financial industry really don't be knowing nothing. Of, who said it? Was it Tom Brady or I can't remember who it was? Or Kobe Bryant, somebody said, yo, people in the league really don't be about that life. They really don't be about no basketball. They really don't be about no football. They just, they've been doing it. They're better than most people. They had the opportunities. And really, I, get, I think the word was mediocre. Yeah, I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been both of them. I can't remember. Seriously, a lot of people, I get some, the worst, um, the worst uh, patient is a doctor. I get nervous sometimes calling. Like right now, I want to call a financial, uh, no, I'm sorry, a fixed income specialist because I really uh, want to work on my uh, bond trading. Every time I get a bond, I hold it to maturity, uh, YTM, uh, yield to maturity. That's how I work. I get a bond. I say how many, you know, you know, terms is it? Is it two terms? Or, you know, is it one year? Is it two years, four years, or whatever? Um, and that money's locked away. Till, and, but you can actually trade the bond, uh, you know, yield to, uh, I can't even remember, current yield, yield to maturity. I don't know. It's like yield to par or something like that. I can't even remember. Uh, and you're, you're supposed to compare the bonds, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you got treasury, treasury bills, you got corporate, you got municipals. Um, and uh, I want to call a fixed income specialist, but I, I get nervous because I'm like, man, I hope like I hope I'm not going to have to spend the whole day calling back three times just to make sure I get the right information. That's more so what industries really care about. It's more so consistency, making sure that all the reps are trained so that if anybody calls, they should get the same information. You know, that's more so. And when you start paying for services, like a personal advisor and whatnot, and, you know, you join the top tier, you know, customer representative, you know, where you're actually paying for services, uh, that's when you get an advisor who y'all can break shit down. Y'all can talk for hours. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can cuss back and forth on the phone. It ain't nothing, you know, but when you're just like a regular, no offense, a uh, retail customer, um, and by retail customer, I mean, probably a customer with, um, probably $250,000 in your brokerage account or less. Um, and you're not paying for no services, you're just going to get Timmy or Tanya on the phone. You know what I'm saying? The person who either graduated from college and need to pay them student loans off, uh, or um, sh she or he hasn't been working for the last eight, nine months, a year, and this company gave them an opportunity. Um, and then you got your other people who are passionate about it, um, who are serious. Uh, but as you know, how many Kobe Bryant's are there? How many, you know, LeBron James's are there? How many Tom Brady's are there? You know, you get, you get one per decade, you know. Uh, that's why I enjoy my generation because I've been able to experience, like, all from Mike Tyson to Michael Johnson uh, to Hussein Bolt to, well, I don't want to say her name. I was going to say Marion Jones, but we know her story. Um... Oprah Winfrey's, Barack Obama, Michael Phelps, um, Floyd Mayweather, or, or Bernie Madoff. Not Bernie Madoff. I'm sorry. This season. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger. Um, uh, it's been a it's been a great generation. It's just it, it's even had its turmoil. 9/11. Uh, you know, it's just epic moments uh in life and i'm sorry to anybody who um had to experience uh 9-11 uh in, in, you know the, the tragedy i believe it or not uh i had my experience as well um my my family uh is military and uh oh man oh my gosh it's starting to bring back emotions oh man oh it was terrible it's starting to uh, a rush of emotions is starting to take over Oh, uh, oh my gosh! I think I was in either I was in class or at lunch. I think I was in class, and I think they brought us to the lunch room and was like, "Everybody, just come to the lunch room and sit down, and we're gonna get this figured out." Um, yeah. So 
I get a uh, basically I knew the World Trade Center got hit and it's already devastated. Don't get it twisted, you know. Uh didn't have anybody that worked at the World Trade Center. Um and then they said uh an airplane just crashed into the Pentagon. I said, "Fuck." Oh my gosh. I was like, "You can't be serious." And they're like, "Yeah, you know." I was like, "And uh did I have a cell phone?" I had I had a cell phone and the towers, the cell phone towers went out because the I guess the the traffic was too much. Cell phone towers went out. So you couldn't get a hold of nobody. You couldn't call nobody. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was terrible. I'm sorry, I don't even know how I got on that topic. But it it's been a wonderful time. Um but yeah, yeah, so you may get somebody who's passionate and you just hope you may have to call back three or four times before you get the specialist who doesn't really care about. So when you call these companies, a lot of these companies, they have like amount of time that you can be on the phone with a customer. Uh, they, they, that's the optimal amount of time. And they, you have supervision who really sits there and like monitors it as well as doing their job. Uh, you know, finding customers money that's probably been lost in some transfer, you know, other stuff that principles do they're the they're the i don't even know all the series i think they're the they're the series 24s those are our principles they um uh they're on top of it they got to monitor you know the 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 phones they got to do their principal stuff uh whatever i don't even know what they do uh um but yeah um so you get a certain amount of time to be on these phones they're monitoring it and um you just got to get the most amount of information. Now, you get a representative like me. I don't care about the time. This is what really threw a lot of people off when they would work with me. I didn't care about the metrics at all. I probably had the worst metrics because I didn't care about them. So there's this thing called an NPS score. I can't. I don't know what it stands for. Uh, but this is the score of how you make the organization look and yourself. The net promoter score or something like that. I can't even remember. So, this score is like one out of a hundred, right? It's, I mean, it's, and you have to score like, like a ninety-nine on my NPS. And the NPS metric is random. You don't know when you're going to get it. The other metrics, how long are you on the phone? There's also like a three-day callback. Do customers that you talk to have to call back within three days? Various things. There's so many of them. I can't even keep up with them all. Um, but then there's the NPS score. That one's random. It, 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 it's just a random survey sent to customers. So if I could say anything else, if you get a survey, please take the survey. This is how people behind the, uh, you know, behind the scene get promotions, get terminated even. I'm not sure. Uh, this, is how, this is how organizations can really figure out who's their top tier can't, you know, representatives and whatnot. And if you're a small business owner or a business owner, Consider incorporating surveys into your thing if you don't do it already. Basically, you could even do a fishbowl, you know, you know, whatever y'all, you know, write, whatever you want to write, throw it in the fishbowl. And um, I, I think it has an impact on income. There's things that don't bring in income that um, impact income. And I think surveys impact income because it makes people feel like, hey, they're listening to me. And also, if you can incorporate those surveys, don't just, you know, be like, oh, fuck it. You know, throw it in the furnace. Um, show the customers. We're listening. You know, they really care. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, a um, couple things. I do want to work on my bond trading. On another thing is, so with these different companies. So, in the financial industry, you got your categories, your subcategories, and everything. So, in investments, there's different brokers. You kind of got your broker who... You know, it's all about money, money, money. Uh, I'm talking about from like the, um, like I'm, I'm applying for jobs right now. I'm still applying for jobs, uh, still trying to get a job. Um, and with these different brokers, I, I, I can't name them all, but like, let's take like BlackRock and Vanguard. Uh, uh, those are more so like wealth management firms. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, their structure, but if I had to say wealth management firms, um, more so probably pay their employees on a salary basis. Uh, this isn't going to be like commissions. 
and whatnot. Not saying that there's not somebody at BlackRock or Vanguard who's not who who is getting commi- I mean, who isn't getting commissions. They they got their probably, but that's not like their their motive, their structure. And I have no idea. I'm making this up right now, you know. So don't take this and you know run with it. Uh, so their structure is probably going to be more so salary. Then you got other companies. Let's take your, I don't know, Charles Schwab's and Edward Jones's and I don't know who else right now. But those companies are probably more so going to be catered to commissions. They are more so the people who Vanguard, BlackRock, uh, I'm not uh, sure, uh, but I'm pretty sure they already have their customer base. So when you come to them. I can't even remember all the names of these companies. Gosh, I used to remember all the uh, Tasty, I think it was Tasty Works, uh, Zach's Trade, uh, L, L, LV, BZ, I can't remember. Um, oh my gosh, I used to remember all the names of these companies. There's like 6,000 of them. There's several of them. I can't remember how many there are. There's a lot of them. Um, but some more so, uh, Vanguard's huge on the customer. Uh, I can't even remember their structure, but one thing that's huge on them is Customers are the owners of the mutual funds, and whenever you invest in a mutual fund, you invest in yourself or something like that. That's like their structure. Uh, so representatives are not really getting like these commissions. I'm not saying all of them. There's probably some up there, the top tier, Vanguard, you know, uh, flagship customer um, that's getting, I mean, not a representative that's getting a commission. Um, but for the most part, it's probably salary, you know, because that's what they're more catered to. And not saying that they're good salaries, bad salaries, whatever. They they may meet the market. They may exceed the market. They may be below market. I'm not sure. It may also depend on where you live. Uh, Vanguard employee in Pennsylvania is probably not going to be getting the same thing as a Vanguard employee in, in North Carolina. I have no idea. Um, don't quote me this. But then you got your other companies that are, like, really, like, commission-based, like, um, who do you know? Are you military? Are you an ex NFL basketball player? Are you just rich? Um, you know, like who are you? Who do you know? Who can you bring to the company? Now these companies, you also got to be worried because, uh, I've, I've experienced it, not me personally, but some people who feel, I'm not saying this is true, who feel their objective is to get your book of business. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Uh, that's just speculation. Um, they got some stuff out there. There's some stuff called, like, poaching and whatnot. It's a whole lot out there, man. I don't know. You got to talk to the geniuses. There's some real geniuses out there, man. I worked with some of them. And they were really cool people, man. Um, so, in um, these different uh, firms, again, they all do different things. So, uh, this company may want to just know what's your book of business, how much you're going to bring in, you know, can you make, you know, $12 million a, a year, uh, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And then other companies are just like, uh, can you take care of the comp- the customer and the company, make us look good, make yourself look good and make your department look good. Uh, no real big on, you know, salary. Uh, you know, you're going to get the, you know, your typical, you know, Probably five figures, probably, you know, 50, 60, 80 K somewhere between there. Uh, opportunities for pro- promotions, uh, benefits will take care of your uh, st- study materials. You know, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. So with some of these companies, it's more so about trading. You know, can you trade really good? You know what I'm saying? And not break any regulations because um, I think a lot of times the regulators – are like I'm not saying I don't want for lack of better words are like these wizard of Oz's you you study all the regulations but you really don't know them you know what I'm saying like you know you like the Department of Justice all these people you know you really don't know who they are you know what I'm saying FINRA who the hell are they SEC where are they you know uh, so I think from a lot of these firms they're just they're just like hey follow the rules follow the rules we don't you know we we don't want FINRA calling us. We don't want the SEC calling us. Make sure you follow the rules. But also trade like a motherfucker. Because we we got we got you know, we got we can we know the system as well too. 
you know, we can use the system in our favor as well. If we do get the phone calls by FINRA or SEC, we'll figure out how we can work this all out. Um, and then, uh, the, then you got other financial companies who are more so about financial planning. You know, college savings accounts, 529s, uh, um, UTMAs, retirement planning, uh, financial management, period. You know, not so much about uh, coming in and uh, trading, you know, accounts and trying to bring in the most amount of money. But can you come up with a good financial plan? So I've been working on my trading, but I have not been working on my financial planning. And financial planning is really what's important to me. I tell you, I really care about the industry. I really do. Uh, I really care about the integrity. I really care about financial planning. It's very important to me. It's not about just stocks, bonds, stock bonds, bear market, bull market, trade, trade, trade. So how much money can you make in 15 minutes? No, no, no. This isn't Black Monday with Don Cheeto. Um, you know, all right, let's trade, you know, uh, Matthew McConaughey and, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, I like to rub one out in the bathroom before I get started, you know, um, you, no, it's, it's, you know how to trade, but also how can you trade and put, make this the best interest of the customer to their, to their financial plan, you know, um, because you also got to realize a lot of customers really don't know their risk tolerance and whatnot. Uh, they say, yeah, I'm risky. I want to make a lot of money. And then as soon as the market drops, they're like, oh, oh, am I paying you to lose my money? You know, it's like, dude, listen, or sweetheart, listen, um, the market fluctuates. Like right now, everybody's like, oh, the market's a real bull market. Should we sell the Magnificent Seven? I mean, I don't know. I mean, because that's the market. So you got to trade some point. If, you know, at some point we need sellers and then we need buyers. So, you know, um, so, you know, you might have a sell off. You might have a, a buy on. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so then you have a person who says, oh, man, I'm low risk. I don't want to lose a dime, you know, and then, uh, all right, you're like, cool. All right. And then you start, you know, setting up the portfolio and they're like, yo, what's up? Why is this portfolio not moving? Like, well, I mean, it's moving, but you're getting, you know, dividends. You're getting uh, interest payments from your fixed income. And it's like, oh, cool. But I was hoping for a little bit more money, you know. And it's like, oh, well, you got to take a little bit more risk. You know, you got to, you know, we got to, you know, we may not want to put so much, uh, you know, in fixed income or whatnot. And more so, we want to make sure that we get to their plan, what they're trying to achieve, the optimal pl- we want to optimize their plan. Uh, so we got to get the financial planning uh, down part. So what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick, what I do is uh, it's free. Uh, there's this company called Allison.com. Uh, let me see if I can remember my username and password real quick. Uh, these are, uh, And I think there's another one called like Udemy or something. Uh, I'm going to pull these up. Uh, I used to have LinkedIn Learning. I really liked LinkedIn Learning. Um I don't know if I have it anymore. I doubt it. Uh, but I thought it was awesome. Um, it was great, man. I miss LinkedIn Learning. So I don't have a Udemy account, but it does look like I have an Allison.com account. So I'm going to in introduction to financial management right now, and I'll let y'all hear a little bit. It's free. Introduction to financial management. Introduction to the module. In this module, you will learn about financial management, its objectives, and financial manager's role. Furthermore, you will get to know the relationship between financial management and corporate finance, along with the different types of financial reports that companies create to stay profitable. Topics to be covered. What is financial management? The objective of financial management. The role of financial managers. Financial management versus corporate finance. Financial reports, budget. Okay, I want to make sure this is what I'm looking state. for. Okay, this might not be the. This may not be the one I'm looking for. Um, I'm gonna look at that one too. Um, <laughs> my bad. Uh, let me go to the home page real quick. I'm looking for. I want to look at that one too. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Um, let me do financial. Um. 
financial planning. Yeah, financial planning. Uh, let me see if they have. Um, oh, they got one called financial advisors roles and responsibilities, financial modeling and decision making and business planning. Um let me go to financial advisor roles and responsibilities. Ah, is, uh, is that the class I want to hear? Let me just go to that one and see what they talk about. Uh, recall common terms. Uh, state the roles and responsibilities of financial advisors. Explain the functions and skill sets table. Summarize objectives of financial planning. Discuss the types of services advisors offer to clients. Let's start here. This thing is like three hours long. Gosh, darn. All right, let's get it. I'm going to start. I'll just start it, and then I'm probably going to fall asleep to it. But let's start it. Introduction to finance. Introduction to the module. This module covers the basic concept of finance financial advisory and their roles as well as responsibilities. This module will also focus on your career as a financial advisor. Topics to be covered. What is finance? Financial concept. Introduction to financial advisory. Financial advisor glossary, common financial planning terms. Roles and responsibilities of a financial advisor. Financial advisor as a profession. All right, well, I'm... Finance. The business concern needs finance to meet their requirements in the financial and economic world. Any business activity depends on finance. Hence, it is called the lifeblood of a business organization. Whether the business concerns are big or small, they need finance to fulfill their business activities. Finance may be defined as the art and science of managing money. It includes financial service and financial instruments. Finance is also referred to as the provision of funds at the time when it is needed. The finance function is the procurement of funds and their effective utilization in business concerns. According to the Oxford Dictionary, the word finance connotes management of money. Financial concept. All right, I ain't gonna drag y'all through this because this is about to get boring. Uh, So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through this. Um, this is one thing I'm working on. And then also, hopefully later, I can work on uh, trading bonds. Uh, actually learning how to trade bonds and not just hold them till maturity. I know one thing with bonds is something like with like... So, for example, like if you lend me $100 and at 10%, I owe you $110 at maturity at the end of our you know deal. So if, let's say, the interest rates rise up on you and you say now interest is 20%, because of our deal, our bond, I don't owe you 120 now. It's not going to be like, hey, you owe me 120 now. It's like, what for? It's like interest rates went up. It's like, no, I'm not. What is this? What what do they call them? Landlords or slumlord? Like, get out of here. No, (laughs) the principal drops down. So if it goes up 20%, now the principal drops down to like $90, you know what I'm saying? So that we still have that $110 agreement and then vice versa. If um, interest rates go down, you know, I can't call you and be like, hey, now I only owe you uh, uh, the $100 that I borrowed. It's like, nah. If interest rates go down, now the principal goes up. Now uh, your principal will jump up to like $120. Uh, or let me see, or no, 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 uh, or one hundred twenty dollars, and then interest rates will drop down to like five percent or whatever it is, something like that. I I just made that up, so I'm I'm not sure if I got my numbers correct and everything, but that's pretty much where it goes with bonds. So I'm assuming if interest rates are higher and the principals are lower, that might be a time where you may want to buy the bond, and then if you're anticipating the interest rates to drop, then uh, the, uh, the interest rates drop and the principal probably goes up. And then that's probably the time when you sell the bond. I'm not sure. I'm going to get my books out, uh, just do some general bond review 
And then I got to get better with the corporate uh, municipal bonds, uh, the T-bills, the, the notes. Um, and just understand, like, even just simple terms like what note means, uh, you know, because I even get a little confused. Uh, because if you look at your dollars, it says note on there, and which essentially means um, I believe that you owe money on this. I'm not, don't quote me on this. This is why I'm going to get my research done. And that's what people don't really understand is when you get that note, that means that you received a note and that you owe this back with interest. You know, so it's a whole it's a whole cycle. It's a whole thing with financial literacy. Just simple things like knowing what note means. Here, real quick, while we got while we got a second before I get into this financial planning stuff. Um and that's just in case uh I you know I could get the, the one company who's like, who do you know? How many people do you know? How many millions of dollars can you bring into this company? And I'm like, man, I don't know, man. Listen, if I put all my friends and family together, we, we could probably just, we could probably have a million dollars all together, okay? This is, you know, and then, then you get the other company who's like, oh, no, we already got our customer base. We don't really need you to bring in a bunch of customers. We need you to know if you can financially plan, you know, so I got to work on both ends and uh, just get ready for whoever might call me. We don't know. We don't know how God's going to work. God could say, Chan, I got man makes a plan and God laughs. God could have a totally different plan for me. Like, man, you ain't going down that path. You know what I'm saying? Like, you may, look, you may be going down the path of, you know, trading on your own or, you know, this podcast uh, idea that you're working on may be your next path. Who knows? Nobody knows. But uh, let me see real quick. Um, what does note mean on a dollar bill? According to Investopedia, a Federal Reserve note is a term to describe the paper demand liabilities of the Federal Reserve, commonly referred to as dollar bills, which circulate in the U.S. as legal tender. Uh, let me see. Let me see. The term bank note comes from the notes of the bank, uh, Nota de Banco, and dates from the 14th century. It originally recognized the right holder. See, I got to do my research on this. Um, but I essentially, if, you, if I saw something that said uh, the term described the paper demand liabilities of the Fed Reserve. So I'm not sure what that means. If the, the liability is on us or them. But if I'm correct, I'm not sure. I'm not even trying to say if I'm correct. I'm not sure. But essentially... I think note means like, hey, look, um, I got to, I, I know I sound so stupid right now. Uh, this is embarrassing, but it essentially means like, hey, you know, this is our note to you. Okay. Here's, uh, um, here's a $5 bill. Okay. So you get this $5 bill. And when I put this note in your hand, you already owe me interest on that note. Okay, so you can go use this note to go do whatever you want with it, but I'm going to come back and get that note from you. Now, how do they get these notes? Taxes, whatever. I don't know. Different various things that the Federal Reserve, they have their liabilities. You know, they got the money print machine that they probably got to oil up and they got all the employees that they got to pay and they got their debt to other countries that they probably got to pay various things. So how do they get these notes out of circulation? I don't know. Uh, through monetary and fiscal policy and all this stuff. So real quick, when you see people in rap videos or whatever, hip hop videos, whatever you want to call it, because you see them do it the most with, with bunch of dollar bills and everything. I know some people say, now that's prop money. OK, let's just say it's not prop money. A lot of people look at that and say, wow, they got a lot of notes. You know what I'm saying? You also could look at it in a different way of they got a lot of debt because on all those notes that they have, they're going to have to pay interest on all of those notes. And what are most people going to do with their notes? Holler at the weed man, buy a new car, buy a house to live in, which is not a problem at all. If you got all those notes, do your thing. I'm not trying to, you know, say that's wrong, but all those things that we named (laughs) are everything that's going to depreciate. So you purchased with this note, which you already owe interest, you already pur- you purchased something that's going to go down. Where another individual 
is going to take that note and say, hey, I'm in debt already. The more notes I get, the more debt I'm in. Let me purchase assets such as stocks, bonds, cryptocurrency, land, real estate as a, uh, as a rental property. Uh, or you do Turo where you rent out your cars and you purchase them. I don't know. But they're purchasing assets. So I'm pretty sure... Just think about it. You know, I love my trap stars. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my trap stars. I hope that, you know, one day you, you'll stop trapping. Um, think about it as if you went to your plug and your plug um, starts noticing that you're starting to move up. They're going to question like, yo, what are you doing? So you go to your plug. Let's say you're on consignment. Uh, uh, and... Um, uh, you're coming back. Hey, need more, need more. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you're starting to you're starting to do well for yourself. Your plug is probably going to start asking questions like, "Yo, what are you doing?" You know what I'm saying? You're you're not supposed to be getting out of debt. You're supposed to be getting in debt. And shout out to my trap stars, be careful because this is how you can get yourself shot by the plug. I know it sounds crazy. It's like, "Why would my plug shoot me?" You know what I'm saying? It's because you're growing too fast. You you think that the robbers only come from people below you, or I don't want to say anybody's below or above anybody, but you think that's where all the no. One day you're gonna go pick up, you're gonna go try to go pick up a package from your plug, and only as I notice because you know I've talked to you, I've you know uh, I'm I'm not in trap, I don't be around that life. I'm I'm Christian, uh, I'm I'm joking, I'm joking, but um, <laughs> I, I know I, I I probably upset God so much because I'm such a hypocrite. Uh, he's gonna say I don't know you and you make me throw up. Sorry, I'm gonna get my life together one day. Um, but one day you're gonna go to pick up your package and your plug is going to put you down because they can't have you. You're becoming a competitor now. So the Fed Reserve prints all these notes. They want to boost the economy, true. But also, if you're going around um, uh, getting all these assets uh, and then giving them their money back with interest, like, hey, here's your money back with interest. Uh, and actually, I'm good now. I actually, and they and they say like, "Hey, do you need some more notes?" And you like, "No, nah, I'm good. Actually, I'm I'm okay." And say, like, well, well, "Well, what's the deal? What's the big deal here? I got I got 25 notes here, right here for you. You know what I'm saying? All hundred dollar bills. Oh, the big ones. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like oh, 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 here we go. You know, you're like, no, nah, actually, I'm okay. Um, uh, I'm, you know, such and such is actually accepting uh cryptocurrencies. Uh. Uh, I don't know, uh, Dan Ryan Holmes or, or Ryan Holmes or whatever it is, or uh, the Honda dealership or whatever. They're actually accepting um, Bitcoin now. And it's like, oh, oh, OK, OK. They're going to be like, who's this Bitcoin motherfucker? You know, <laughs> like they're going to be like, OK, this is not cool because now the dollar is depreciating and it doesn't have as much power. And, you know, they, they're like, come on, it, what would it take for us to put these notes in your hands? You, when people start learning, I'm sorry to say, when you start getting into the financial sector, you start realizing the relationship that we've had. We're the bear. They're the human. But yet they're the one whipping our asses, you know, <laughs> like and you start realizing like, oh, I whenever the people try to give me money, I should be in control. Like or even when you give your money to the bank, you should be in control. Okay, I'm going to lend my money to you. How much interest are you all going to pay me back? Okay, we'll give you this much interest. Not enough. Or vice versa. Hey, we want to give you a stimmy. Um, we want to put our dollar in your hand. What do we got to do to get that in your hand? Okay, you can give it to me, but you got to give it to me at a low interest rate. You know, it's like, okay, fine. Just stop using cryptocurrency and stop using gold or whatever it is. And it's like, but dog, you know this money you're giving me really doesn't have anything attached to it. And it's like, yes, it does. What? The full faith and credit worthiness of the United States of America. Oh, thanks. You know, so, you know, it's just a whole game out here and you learn it. And it's fun. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're kind of informed. But when you, you know, because when you're not and you're just like, oh, going to work and you're stacking your chips and you're putting them in the bank and the relationship is starting to churn and do you know how hard it is to get out of a bad relationship once you kind of built it up? I remember last thing when um, uh, Trump got in office, 
Uh, and he tried to redo. I don't know why he spent so much time on the health care because, you know, uh, former President Barack Obama um, worked so hard on it. It was pretty much, if anything, his staple. I would have been like, OK, uh, it hasn't been worked on in 100 years. You know, uh, Barack got that taken care of. You know, President Barack got that taken care of. All right, good. What can we work on next? Now, nah, he tried to work on it. And then he was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize how much work. The former president, Barack Obama, did fantastic job. It was it was too intertwined. I remember him saying it's, it's too intertwined. I, I, I can't. It's like a web, you know, <laughs> he couldn't undo it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's pretty much when you get into that nasty, toxic, bad relationships, it gets kind of hard to reverse, reverse, you know, where it's like, oh, is this what I've been doing? I've been basically taking all this debt, taking all these notes, getting into debt, giving it to the bank getting a low interest rate, they're taking my money, turning it into assets for themselves, give me the smallest interest rate. Okay, where do I go from here? I got to reverse this, you know, and then it takes years to get up out of that. It's a whole game. It's a whole game. Uh, it's fun. You got to play it. Sometimes you do fall into it, not fall into it in a bad way. You say, you know what? I did really did well this year in the stock market. I want to go ahead and pull my money out of the stocks. And I want to go ahead and put it into a bank, get that 5% in that high yield savings account. And, and, and I want to chill. Now you're, you're, you're in control. And then you say, you know what? Um, 24 months from now, um, I'll, I'll probably pull it out and I'll probably go trade some precious metals or, I don't know, go do some rental properties or open up a small business. Whatever it is that you want to do. Sell, you know, your socks online. Hey, whatever you want to do. It's not it. Hey, as long as you're not on your ass, it's an asset, I think I hear people say. So, have a wonderful day. I'm not done yet. I'll be back. Um, I'm going to work on this financial planning, watch watch a couple of these videos. Uh, I've got a couple of things i got to work on. Then I'm going to try to do a little research on bond training. Um, I'm not done. i got a few things. So, I may be back later today. I may not. Uh, it's approximately 9.07 uh, AM Eastern Standard Time, January 3rd, 2024. The market should be open in about 23 minutes. Not sure if I'll be back by market opening, but I'm not sure. I'll let y'all know. Thank y'all so much for stopping by to come kick it with me. I appreciate it. I'm Chairman, and this is House of Barf. Blah. I am thrilled to introduce you to an exciting new storybook journey that I believe will capture your imagination. Allow me to present Langston Mangston's Kool-Aid Stand Adventure, a compelling short story that promises to transport you to a world of interest, excitement, and learning. The title of the book is Langston Mangston's Kool-Aid Stand Adventure by Chandler Hayes. In a world of colorful imagination and captivating stories, a new children's book has emerged to empower our young minds with crucial life lessons, life skills, and financial literacy. Langston Mason's Kool Aid Stand Adventure is a cheering short story written by a talented black author who understands the importance of equipping our youth in the early stages of life with the tools they need to navigate the realm of money, savings, and smart choices. Meet Langston Mingston and his imaginary best friend, Sonky, a pink elephant, two curious souls who embark on an adventure around the vibrant landscape of Wichita, Kansas, where Langston Mingston sets out to accomplish multiple goals and is met with obstacles that he must overcome. Langston Mingston and Zonky discover valuable lessons of talking about finances in the home in order to gain knowledge. Langston Mangston, with a little bit of confidence, the guidance of supportive parents, the help of community members like Mr. Tiller, and his imaginary best friend Zonky, Langston Mangston learns about the value of money and how to save, the importance of making thoughtful spending decisions, the significance of thinking outside the box when met with challenges, with money, and the joys of sharing with others. Through relatable experiences and emerging and, and engaging storytelling, young readers are introduced to the fundamental concepts of money such as earning, saving, and spending responsibly. Langston Mangston set savings goals, teaching children the importance of planning for future needs and dreams. 
The book celebrates diversity and the different perspectives on money, shedding light on its role in different people's lives. The characters' interactions emphasize the joys of serving others, the gift of sharing, and making a positive impact in their community. The pages of Langston Mengston's Cool and Made Stand Adventure come to life with vibrant illustrations. The colorful and imaginative visuals not only captivate young readers, but also enhance their understanding of complex financial concepts. Langston Mengston's Cool and Made Stand Adventure is coming soon to bookstairs and online realtors. It is a must-have addition to any child's library, fostering essential life skills while sparking the joy of reading. Empower the young minds in your life with the gift of financial literacy and imagination. Join Langston Mangston, Zonky, family, and friends on their extraordinary journey of running a drink stand to set them on the path of a brighter future. Your opinion means a great deal to me. I would be honored if you would consider exploring Langston Mangston's Cool and Made Stand Adventure and sharing your thoughts. Your feedback could play an invaluable role in shaping the future of this project. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to discuss the book further, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Your support in spreading the word about Langston Mangston's Cool and Stand Adventure would mean the world to me, and I deeply appreciate your consideration. I am a passionate advocate for financial literacy. Me, um, Chandler Hayes, um, and and am excited to join the community of storytellers with a background in finances I am driven to inspire children to embark on their own adventures of learning and discovery through the power of literature Langston Mangston's Cool and Made Stand Adventure is a heartfelt endeavor to promote financial literacy in a fun and accessible way as a black author I'm committed to providing children of all backgrounds with the tools for success and I am proud to contribute to a more financially informed generation. Thank you for taking the time to explore this advertisement and I look forward to the possibility of sharing this extraordinary literature adventure with you. Please feel free to contact me. Uh, You can reach me at the email c 287 gph at gmail.com all right thank you warmest regards have a great day god bless